All right, so we're gonna look at this example problem for angle of repose. So let's go ahead and read it. A 25 kilogram box of textbooks rests on a loading ramp that makes an angle of alpha with the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25 and the coefficient of static friction is 0.35. As the angle alpha is increased, find the minimum angle at which the box starts to slip. So to kind of visualize that, what happens is there's a box that's sitting on here and the static friction will vary from zero up to this maximum mu sub s times normal force. And as this angle increases, that static friction gets larger and larger until I reach the angle of repose, which is the maximum angle it can be at. And if I go anything past that angle or just give it a little bump, it will start to slide and accelerate off of that situation because as soon as it starts to move just a little bit, that friction switches from static to kinetic and the kinetic is a lot smaller, well not a lot, it's just smaller than the static. All right, so they're gonna ask us a couple things here. They first want us to figure out what angle is it gonna start to slip at. Then they're gonna want us to figure out in part B, at this angle, find the acceleration once it's begun to move. And then in part C, at this angle, how fast will the box be moving after it has slid five meters along the loading ramp? So we're gonna switch from a static problem to a kinetic problem for friction, and then we're gonna do a 1D motion problem. So again, as we set this up, we're going to have forces being a force problem, and we're gonna have also a motion problem, and our link between those two is going to be acceleration. So let's get started setting this up. Uh, looking at my free body diagram for the static situation, so acceleration is zero, uh, I am going to rotate my coordinate system because I want to only resolve one vector. So I will rotate my coordinate system. And when it becomes a kinetic problem and it is accelerating, I definitely need to rotate my coordinate system. So here we are going to resolve mg into components. This angle is alpha, that makes this angle alpha. So I have mg cosine of alpha there, mg sine of alpha here. If we wanna redraw this free body diagram, it's gonna look like this. I have mg cosine of alpha, mg sine of alpha, normal force, and I have my force of friction. Now at first, these two things are balanced. But then when this switches from static to kinetic, this number gets smaller and these are unbalanced and this one will be then bigger and it will start to accelerate. So we're gonna first look at the situation where we've reached this maximum value to find that angle. So summing up the forces in the y direction, I get zero. So I have normal force minus mg cosine of theta equals zero. So the normal force is equal to mg cosine of, oops, alpha, not theta. Next, we're going to do the x direction. So I sum up the force in the x direction. Again, it's going to be zero because we are at that maximum angle. It hasn't started accelerating yet. So I have mg sine alpha minus the force of friction equals zero. And this force of friction we are talking about is the maximum because we wanna know what is that maximum angle, that angle of repose. So we're gonna substitute in some stuff here. So we have mg sine alpha equals, we'll move it over to the other side and make our substitutions times normal force. All right, normal force I have to solve for in the y direction. So now I have mg sine alpha equals mu sub s times mg cosine of alpha. Oh my, so I have an mg on both sides, so the m's cancel and the g's cancel. So the angle of repose for, say, this ramp is going to be the same if I go to the moon, um, because it doesn't matter what object I put on that ramp, and it doesn't matter what um, the acceleration of gravity is on it. All that matters is what is that coefficient of friction between those two objects, okay? So lastly, I just have to solve for alpha, but I got it in two places. So we're gonna have to do a little trick here. When I divide cosine of alpha over, I get sine alpha divided by cosine alpha. And doing a little trick here, sine over cosine is actually tangent. So I end up with the tangent of alpha equals mu sub s. And to find alpha, I just need to say alpha is going to equal the inverse tangent of mu sub s, which they gave to us as 0.35, 
And so our angle of repose on this one comes out to be 19.3 degrees. Now I'm gonna go ahead and store that on my calculator because I'm gonna need that for the next problem. Okay, so the next problem sets up as, well, what happens when this force of friction becomes a static and these are no longer balanced? Well, it's gonna to start to accelerate. So let's set that up. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is now going to be ma. It is going to be accelerating down that ramp. So I still have my same equation. I still have mg sine alpha, and that's the alpha we just found, minus the force of friction equals ma. The difference is now I have a kinetic friction. And when I have a kinetic friction, that's when I need to go ahead and substitute, substitute, substitute. So I have mg sine alpha minus mu sub k times n equals ma. Again, I'm gonna find that normal force in my y direction. So I have mg sine alpha minus mu sub k times mg cosine of alpha equals ma. Oops, ma. Now, as I'm looking at this, every single term has an m. That means it will cancel. So this term has an M, this term has an M, this term has an M. Does every single term have a G? Well, this term has a G, this term has a G, this term does not have a G. So I can only cancel out if it's in every single term. Terms are groups of variables or numbers that are multiplied or divided together. And then there's a subtraction, so that's not, doesn't count. So I now have a new term, equal sign, that breaks up my term, so I have a new term. So at this rate, I should be able to plug in my alpha value and my 9.8 for G and mu sub K they told me was 0.25 and find my acceleration. So my acceleration comes out to be 0.925 meters per second squared. And lastly, they want me to do a 1D motion problem. Now when I do a 1D motion problem on an angle, like on an inclined plane, my 1D motion, my X direction, is along this incline, okay? It's not my old X direction, the base of this, because I rotated it, my X direction is actually along that hypotenuse. So remember, sometimes they'll even give you the height of this incline, and so you have to do a little trigonometry to find out the hypotenuse to do your 1D motion. So here, let's go ahead and set up that 1D motion. So I got X naught X, V naught V, A, and T. So I just found the acceleration. It goes five meters from rest and with an acceleration of 0.925. Trying to find final velocity. Looks like I'm using an equation without t. That would be equation number three. So I have v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. Cross anything out that's zero and solve. And so I get the square root of two times 0.925 times five. And I get a final velocity when I type that in my calculator of 3.04 meters per second. So in this problem, we did a bunch of things. We did the angle of repose part, and then we did, well, what happens if it's sliding down an incline? And how do I incorporate a forces problem and a 1D motion problem, well, my link is that acceleration. And sometimes I find the acceleration in the forces and then plug it into my 1D motion. Sometimes I find it in 1D motion and plug it into my forces. That was a long one. <laughs>